Good evening, YouTube family, and thank you for coming back. I'm Deb Chanel, and thank you for coming back to Deb Chanel's 48th World, where we do reviews, recaps, and pretty much talk about anything and everything we want to talk about here on my channel, okay? Um, just want to say thank you for coming over to the house. I know you're very busy with your day-to-day -day lives and this, that, and the third, but I'm so glad you chose to give me 30 minutes to an hour of your time to sit here, talk with me about different trending topics that are out there on social media. Now, you know I don't follow everybody, okay? But you know who I follow if you've been following me, all right? But I heard on the streets of Atlanta that Jocelyn Hernandez is coming back. Yeah, it's coming back to love and hip-hop Atlanta. Now, when she left, I left the show because pretty much it was going downhill. And uh, Mimi and the other cast members just didn't hold my attention because I was, I was pretty much um, giving commentary on reviews on that show. If you don't know that, go into my archive history of my videos and you'll see that I used to be um, doing commentary on them too. And of course, I was biased. Um, I love myself from Jocelyn Hernandez. I, she could do no wrong in my eyes. <laughs> Because on that particular show, I already knew it was just strictly racticity, ratchetness at its best, okay? And, and, as, and at its worst as well. But K. Michelle was on there as well. And I used to do a lot of commentary on K. Michelle, my life, after she got a spinoff from being on Real Hip Hop of Atlanta. And then she moved to, I think it was Real Hip Hop Hollywood or something. And then she left and did her own little thing. Then she came back and... You know, I was just like, mm -mm, go and get your show again, and I'll review you too, honey. Okay, but not on Love and Hip Hop uh, Hollywood. But I will only be doing the review on Real Housewives, not Real Housewives of Atlanta, I'm sorry. Love and Hip Hop uh, Atlanta, only when she's being featured. Okay, because I got it like that. I don't like everybody. I can't talk about everybody. You know what I'm saying? I get my commentary. If they don't strike an interest or pique my interest, uh, I would say. So I just wanted to let y'all know heads up in case y'all see me doing commentary on Joyce Hernandez and yes I'm gonna tell you right now I'm biased towards her but I still know how to call a spade a spade yes I may love her may like her because I have actually got a chance to um see her in public uh but that's another story for another day but um yeah she is nothing like how she displays herself on tv so it doesn't it is very plausible that the people that I talk about on Real Housewives of Atlanta and Married to Medicine, um, you know, that I give commentary on, they probably are, are the same. They're totally different. They feel like they have to embellish a lot to be predictable and lovable on the screen because everybody likes a good villain here and there. You know, we do. We just don't talk about it or say it. You know, we talk about it, you know, behind the closed doors and stuff of that nature. But we like it. We love it. And we partake in it from time to time, if not all the time. Okay. But uh, that's just my side part. I keep it a secret just between us. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, I just kind of wanted to let y'all know how I felt about that particular show that she was on because that that was the epitome of ratchetness when it first dropped out here in Atlanta and everybody was on it because I do like scrapping I like um what's his name young Jock. is that like young Jock? I think his name is young Jock. and um and, and Stevie J when you put them two together you ain't got nothing but a, a, a full-blown out hit show but they never would give them a show so, similar to what they would never give Real Housewives of Atlanta's men you know we had Apollo, Greg, uh, Todd and um, Peter they never would give them a show and you know everybody would have been interested in that but I guess they just wanted to keep the man down <laughs> But that's another here nor there. I'm going out in a tangent. But it would have been made good public TV. I don't know why Bravo didn't capitalize on that. But whatever. But we're going to be going into this little nice fitted story. Because I was wondering when Eva was going to try to come back and clap back. Uh, after what Kenya and Marlo were saying out there in them streets in Atlanta, girl. And get on their social media platforms and just let hair. But, uh, you know, like I said, I think I admitted it to you all in a couple of past videos. That I'm not even looking at them as being friends. Because when you have a solid friendship with somebody, you don't let 
uh, fame, fortune, and money come in and uh, you've given giving any type of money to tear them up, you know, just for ratings or just to make an interesting uh, plot line or storyline. You just won't do it. It's just not in you. So that's why I, I tend to now, going forward, I look at them as individuals. I look at them as independent contractors uh, in a sitcom show that happens to be slash scripted uh, reality show. Um, if they do tend to hang out with each other, I don't really care, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm only focusing on what they give me when I'm looking at them on the TV screen. Because, you know, I don't care. You don't have to compromise everything of your uh, be being, of your essence, of who you are. You don't have to go to certain, uh, d a degree of degrading somebody and making them feel feeling less than to make your money. You can find other type of avenues. And all of these women are definitely uh, well-versed. They know a lot about the entertainment field, and they should be doing something else because they definitely been on Real Housewives of Atlanta to try to solidify some type of uh, talk show. If it's even on a radio type of platform or um, start their own uh, reality show or something, hell, even if I had to be focused on YouTube, you know, people would take a... Um, a gantor at giving you a try because look at T.S. Madison. She's over there doing her show. She's a uh, independent contractor and she's doing well. She's taking her show on the road. She's uh, taping at home and she's making it viable. So when she does get that little knock at the door to say, hey, we want to give you a show, she could command pretty much everything. In anything when it comes to uh, her pay because she's already given her worth out there she's already gotten her fan base up like you know in the millions or whatnot um, and you know it's just a good showing so when you don't did all the work and you want to have a big machine or industry behind you that's just more lucrative and you can command your own salary because if they they don't meet up to your standards of what you feel you're worth then you can kind of continue to do what you've been doing because you've been making a living out of it anyway and you become you've become a household name even though it's focused strictly on youtube and when you make your personal appearances but she's getting other uh side gigs um out there dealing with uh local celebrities as well as um we call it global celebrities that you know hit around international ways of no people knowing them and things of that nature so yeah i think she's pretty much solidified herself and if she keeps working harder and harder and harder she's going to get what she feels she's worth even you know if she's not if she done sold her um commentary to be hosting a tv show you know because people like to buy your shit but then they'll pay they'll pay you what you're worth and then you get perks and then if you do your contract well you can get into syndication and you still get revenue so um that's how i look at the real housewives of atlanta so they can do better but they feel like hey I don't really, and it's just my opinion, I don't really, you know, be fooling with these folks unless we're taping or whatnot. I ain't really trying to have them come and hang out with me because I already, you know, have my set of friends. I trust these set of friends, and I can know when people dropping tea on me because I know who I hang around. I know who I've said things around, so I can kind of ascertain who been filed and, you know, go through my own crew off the air off of public viewing and get them straight you know how they say you get your people straight behind closed doors and if you got the reprimand in public you will do so but they you shouldn't have to if they know how you get down they ain't gonna step out of line if they want to be in your presence still so um i, I kind of got that from uh bernie mac how he uh, you know, the um, comedian, when he did certain interviews, he always said he didn't have time to make no new friends, and especially not no real good friends that he break bread with and go hang out and play golf with or just have intimate time with where you want to sit and trust these people that's been around you forever. And, and, you know, they have definitely have been loyal to you and keeping all your secrets on the wraps and all that stuff and not letting people pay you uh, for intimate stories of that person person's personal life and it's out there in social media or whatnot but he always said that you know he ain't need no new friends he got he can count them on one hand who he get down with and they know a lot about him that could probably destroy his career or make his career more uh salacious to people or whatnot but he know he don't that them are his tested tried and true friends and he know they always have his back 
you know, forever and ever and a day, you know. So I, I, I take that as I live in my whole life. If you don't want something told, hell, keep it between you and the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Don't let it come past your lips to somebody else's ears because then you don't let the cat out of the bag. And you can't really blame nobody but yourself, okay? But that's just a word of advice. I'm just going on my tangent trying to get, you know, y'all. But I don't tear it a little bit too long, <laughs> okay? So let's go on and get into the story that came across my media feed today you know that's how i come across my stories i'm gonna talk about um and i guess it's because of what i talk about or whatever you know how our telephones it seems to have a smartphone in it or, or a little siri or something she goes and you and then you would test it uh for what it's worth have yourself a conversation about a certain subject or a certain thing and your phone is gonna immediately even though you ain't talking on your phone, it just be laying right next to you or it may be in your vicinity when you are sitting talking with loved ones or friends or coworkers or whatever. And then some shit will come across almost identical of a subject that you were talking about. It'll come across your phone. Ain't that some shit? I tell you. Mm, 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 the government at its best, all right? But anyway, we're going to go into a story that UrbanBellMag.com brought out. Yes, Eva was clapping back on Miss Kenya Moore and Miss Marlo Hampton. Yes, they don't had their little time out there to say whatever they had to say on whatever platform they wanted to say it on. And she said, uh-uh, they ain't letting sleeping dogs lie, so I'm going to come back with some funk, okay? And we finna sit up here and set this situation out or off, okay? So the journalist or columnist, Amanda Anderson Niles, we're going to give her credit, okay? She's writing uh, this article that Urban Bell brought out, or entertainment, or I should say, we know the photo was credited. We, she's giving credit to the um, photo of Kenya Moore uh, from Bravo for usage, I guess, fair usage. Uh, that's a disclaimer I guess she's putting out so she don't get hit with any copyright type of... Uh, offenses but um the article is titled uh real housewives of atlanta star evil marcel responds to kenya moore and marla hampton complaints okay let's get on into this and see what they're complaining about because you know i always keep the stories i always read the titles because it has to pull me in and then i may read it just a little bit in that first paragraph and it'll tell me whether or not i want to address this issue is it something worth my time and my talents okay especially trying to find these videos that don't have a lot of people uh, name all written on it and stuff and I love to say Tamara Tattle she be out there but the uh, what you call it? the photos that she has tagged uh, are truly cute and I have to use them so uh, Tamara Tattles, please don't get on me okay I use some of your uh, well really it's for everybody to use but I guess just to get your name out there um, you want to tag the picture with your identity so basically people can come and see who you are and what your channel is all about. I haven't done that yet, but I'm thinking about doing it because it's cute. My daughter does it on her uh, YouTube channel, which is Star J Craziness. Go on and check that child out over there. She be cutting up. You think I cut up? But the apple don't fall too far from the tree. <laughs> and she does get it from her dad. So, uh, yeah my ex-husband okay so she gets her commentary comedian type styles from both of us because we both be you know having people crack up when we don't even really be trying to make people laugh laugh or, or you know uh or be amused but it's just things we say sometimes people just take it like damn they crazy you know they just be bawling out crying of laughter you know so maybe it's a god-given gift i take it I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay, but let's go on into the story. It says, uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta stars Kenya Moore and Marlo Hampton said they believe even Marcel hits below the belt often. Now, again, like I told you, I ain't even trying to look at them as no friends on this show. So, if Bravo is paying you to bring the heat, bring it, honey. Bring the whole kitchen if you must. All right? Shit, if you want to bring the whole house and the kitchen and the table and the shelves and sit there and read somebody for fifth, come on, I'm ready. I'm ready, okay? Because evidently, y'all don't care. You know, y'all say y'all friends one day, then your enemies the next day, then you're making up the next day, then you're back and shit the third day. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, 
to save my peace of mind, let me just not think of these women that they are truly friends. Like they truly go and visit each other when they're not taping. They truly take trips together and this, that, and the third. Okay. So I don't believe it anymore unless they show me. Or I see it in Atlanta when I'm out and about around those affluent areas. And I might, oh, what are they doing together? Then I may assume or presume that they may have somewhat of a cordial relationship, um, you know, on the outside. And everything is just pretty much faked and fraudulent on the show to drive the ratings, to get them a better uh, seat at the table and get them a better uh, monetary means each year okay as the show grows but uh yeah i guess bravo pays you to hit below the belt they don't want you to show them hands though you know on somebody else's body parts but you know words can definitely tear up the soul too as well you know, uh, the tongue is mighty and it's sharp and once shit is out there that it don't came out your mouth uh, yeah, that's the filth, and that's the totality you will have to face when you let all those vicious words out on an individual, because you can't take them back. Once they out there, can't take them back. When they're thought, you can't take them back, not in the Lord's eyes anyway. But it's better left up in their mind than having to sneak out your mouth, and then you have to uh, find some justification of why you said what you said. You, some people going to blame it on the alcohol. Some gonna people going to blame it on, well, I heard you said this. I heard you said that. So I ain't never been one of them kind of people until I think after I turned maybe 12. You know, I kind of believe everybody. But after 12, I guess my puberty kicked in. And I started looking at people like, if they didn't say it in front of my eyes. And if I approached them and uh, had a quiet conversation with them about it if they said they say it and i don't have no proof but just somebody else you know whispering stuff in my ear then it ain't true to me you know what i'm saying are you not that girl uh back then and then it growed into me being a girl to me being a woman because i'm up front i'm like if i hear some stuff that ain't cordial and it's coming from somebody that i ain't never really seen be messy or be out there starting rumors and, and trying to make trouble for you know women because we are catty you know we try to believe everything somebody tell us if they on our team instead of looking at uh they trying to discord uh have discord mm -hmm. in my little short uh uh group of people that i hang around you know what i'm saying i need to look at them first and then i'm gonna look outside but you know if things just keep coming 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 i'm gonna investigate and i'm gonna go straight to that person and if like i said if i've never seen anything heard anything filed that i can hear and see with, with my own uh senses then i'm not gonna believe it but once i find out you can best believe i'm gonna come back and address you about it and that that's like one two three t k o you're out of my life you know because if i don't brought you in my circle you don't broke bread you know my family members you know some of my innermost uh darkest secrets and then you go acting flaky now i ain't got no more time for you ain't no sense of me saying that it is because once you don't interrupt it my sense of peace no nah, you can't get peace back see what i'm saying you can get peace when you have crazy people around you that want to start stuff and want to be you know chaotic all the time and, and cause dissension I don't like that. But anyway, going back to the article, I got on my tangent again. I know y'all. Bear with me. Bear with me. Okay. It goes on to say, Kenya stated this after Eva said that Kenya has a late in life baby. Marla was offended by Eva saying she's never been pregnant. Thus, she can't understand why Eva chose to walk away instead of arguing with Marla while she was pregnant. Now, given the situation that Eva was pregnant, we don't want to, that's just like messing with somebody you know got high blood pressure. And you already know they stewing over there. And they fi they finally finna pop they uh, cap off and, and go off on people. And you know they got high blood pressure. And they old or whatever season. You don't want them to have no stroke. And then you be sitting up there looking stupid and have to go visit them in the hospital. And, and, and ask God to forgive you and all this stuff. You just ain't going to do that. Especially when people are on that borderline of... Uh, one foot in the grave, one foot out of the grave. No, we ain't finna do that. Mm -mm. I don't even pick fights that I know. <laughs> it's not going to be a fair fight. I just chalk it up and just go on about my biz. I, I keep my peace. I stay away from them type of people. And I'm talking about people in my family pretty much. I'm going to let them live let me, and let them let me live, okay? Because you can destroy somebody just with a quick, fast uh, read out your mouth. And you don't know, know how they may take it and how they carry it with them day in and day out. 
But I'm going to say, you know, all fair love and war on this Real Housewives of Atlanta type sitcom or Married to Medicine or whoever I'm talking about. Y'all know exactly what y'all signed up for. You know they are wanting drama. So your idea of how you want to spin it or embellish it, you better bring some drama to the table. You're going to find yourself unemployed. All right. You're not going to be an independent independent agent for Bravo anymore. So, you know, going in, you got to bring drama. So, um... By her saying uh, Kenya had a baby late in life, well, Kenya, you may not have really liked the wording of it, but she brought truth. You did have a baby at late in life. You, I mean, you could have been pregnant in your 20s, 30s, you know. Uh, oh, is she 30 now? She, I think she's more leaning to her 40s, though. But you could definitely have a baby or try for babies in your 20s, your early 30s. You didn't have to wait late in life, but you chose your career and solidifying a, a, a well uh, or established foundation before you wanted to opt in to having babies. And there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong. It just makes it tougher on you to try to conceive because of your age. You know, as we get older, the chances of having a baby coming out with less defects or because you know how to get them or is it amniocentesis when you get older, like in your middle, late 40s and 50s trying to have a baby, you know, because birth defects can come up because of, you know, I ain't going to say your eggs are old, but, you know, trying to have a baby is just at that late age stage. It brings up a lot of medical health issues. You go into having a uh, preeclampsia or something like that. You have problems with your blood pressure. That can happen. Diabetes can come out of nowhere, uh, out of anywhere. And that's even for the people that are in a younger group. You can have pre-diabetes. Uh, issues and there's a whole lot of stuff with having a baby people just don't know having a baby's life and death it's 50 50 you know so I like I praise it I don't praise but I, I, people women are blessed and you have to honor them when they spit out children because you can die in childbirth and you can have uh, other medical conditions coming up because you gave birth you know it could work on your kidneys your liver oh it's just so much so I encourage people, and I know a lot of baby boomers, they don't really want to have children because they feel they're not stable with their jobs because they're all chasing for that million-dollar paycheck. You know, when they come out of college, they think they're going to be making this depending on the field that they went to school for and solidified the degree in. They feel they're coming out, they're going to be making big money, this, that, and third. But no, some people, when you come out uh, with your doctorate degree, half the time you're making master's money. and uh, You come out with your master's degree, uh, you, you're going to be making bachelor's money and, and just going so far down the road because, you know, it's like a double-edged sword. You go to school, you get well-rounded, you get well-versed in culturism and um, what do you call it? Um, in, and well-versed in the subject that you went to school for. Like if you were training yourself as, a, let's say, nurse or even a physician. Uh Basically, they want somebody with experience. Well, hell, you've been sitting up there schooling yourself in the practical, well, I mean, in the theological type uh, realm. And when it's time for you to do practical practice to get out there, you know, you use your internships, your externships as collateral that you are familiar with working in the environment. However, they want you to come out like you don't been somewhere um I don't know, working for Walmart or something, but you've been in school learning this particular career field choice and you need that opportunity. And in school, they do pump you up saying, you know, this type of field, you can make 60 to 80, 90 or 100,000 just coming out the bat, meaning entry level. And it's not necessarily true. You will be starting at the lower part, entry level, when you out the woozaw and make good grades, you know, in school and solidifying all things there. And you have all your degrees and special honors, you know, on your wall or whatever that you definitely can present to them. Or they'll call the school and say, yeah, she got all this or he got all this. And he was this, that, and third. He scored this, that, and third. But people don't want to pay. They really don't. They want to get high quality work for low or mediocre type pay. Unless you know somebody, then that's another whole type of gamut. But again, I don't got off in my tangent again. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm just trying to break it down for these folks that be thinking certain things. But, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, and then um, Marla was saying she was got offended because she said she never had any children. And Marla, I don't know, babe. Did you have any concerns with your health? 
for you not to have any babies or you just didn't give a crap about having none because you know your sister had children that seems like you've been deemed a uh, mother hen over there because your sister is going through some medical issues or whatnot and you've stepped in like you should uh you being the doing the responsible adult thing by uh taking care of her kids until she gets well enough to be able to stabilize and bring them back in her life and be their caregiver so i get it i got it good but I mean, in all fairness, and yeah, her hitting whatever bullet she could spray at y'all at the time. Because like I say, it's all love, fair, and war when you're on these reality shows and they request drama, okay? But they let you decide how you're going to bring it to them. But this is their anticipation. This is what they contracted you to do. So you must go out there and do what you got to do, okay? Just as long as you don't put no hands on nobody. Then it comes, it gets a fine line. They have to go consult legal actions and, and, and talk with them lawyers to see how can we resolve this amicably without going to court <laughs> and i think i did a video on the rules and regulations so uh go and check that video out it's in my archives as well just to give y'all a little edification on some things about when they sign these bravo contracts there are certain things they're allowed to do and certain things they're not allowed to do okay but um yeah so i don't really see and if we're looking at all fairness I don't see that she really hit below the belt because, again, we're not talking about real friendships here. Because if it was so, you wouldn't be on this ratchet TV show and having to have to show your ass here and there in a negative light. Okay? So, it's something you signed up for, you were geared up for, and uh, you trained yourself for. Uh, so, that's just the idea. So, we go back into the article. Um... It says, thus she can't understand why Eva chose to walk away instead of arguing with Marlo while she was pregnant. Well, like I said, if you're an OG, you're trying to do things, you you go and you'd be this disrespectful, destructive as possible. And if you've done your job, you feel good about it, then you must leave. <laughs> it's like your work is done. What else can you do? Is Eva the type of person? Uh, to argue all day long I don't think so because she bet pedals all the time on her scenario and if you don't get played back and show and be shown what you did say verbatim then you're going to play that sideline story of forgetfulness amnesia you know it's going to all come you know it's going to all come a big blur to you but then when you got people like Bravo wanting to get more drama started they're going to say oh let's go back let's roll some tape footage and then you're set at looking at what you said you didn't say in actuality you did say it because it's on front street they have the footage and so they have you not nobody else speaking for you but they have you uh, in that limelight of saying what you said you said but you didn't say it that's what you said you know what I'm saying I'm kind of confused but anyway um, yeah so and then you know I since she was pregnant we just gonna give her that little leeway that she didn't want to upset herself no more she came she saw she conquered she moved on okay people let's get it give it to her now Eva I'm just requesting can we have one season where you're not pregnant so you can give us a full-fledged thrummer thrust of entertainment without us having to have to pull back on you because you really are pregnant. We don't really want to entice you for the negative too long, for so long, okay? But anyway, that's all I had to say about that. Now, we're going to go into the next uh, paragraph. It says, well, Eva has seemingly, seemingly responded, and she's unmoved, okay? In fact, she apparently feels like bullies are playing the victim. Now, I, I can't see Eva's... Uh, thought or train of thought when she's saying yeah if you can say stuff but then when somebody says stuff back to you you're gonna feel like your feelings are hurt or she shouldn't have said it that way no when you're at war all's fair love and war it don't matter it don't matter what tools you use to get your point across or to slay somebody verbally it doesn't you know they don't have a script for that you just uh, come out and do the best you can and hopefully everybody enjoyed that entertainment okay because like I said don't say it like y'all friends because how y'all act on him I, I, I couldn't see nobody being my friend on this show if they had to come at me the way y'all come at each other it doesn't make sense that's not true friendship that's not loyalty okay but going back to the article it says even myself shading abilities have been hit with a lot of criticism while some fans feel she goes too far now her cast members are saying she hits below the belt well no 
I disagree with that totally because all of them hit below the belt when they get pushed to a certain degree and they feel they have to either have that mentality of fight or flight. Half of them don't really want to fly out the room and not get there just cause or just do say it. So they say slick things out their mouth. But I think it's more so coming from, oh, I got to get her because she's making me look stupid on TV. So I don't want to be looked at a certain way. So I had to come off as this fierce comeback getter with some slick words or, you know, like Portia, she do try to put her hands on people sometimes. She done did Aaron Girl man- Management, so it seems like she's doing good in that field. So we ain't going to get on her too much about that. But uh, going back to the article, it said, in fact, uh, Kenya Moore and Marla Hampton were the latest ones to call her out on Twitter. Now, Kenya Moore and Marla Hampton file on play. You know, y'all can say what y'all want to say when y'all on y'all Instagram or, or, or Twitter accounts and, and putting it all in there for the public to take part of. So, hey, Marla, I mean, Eva can do the same thing. Hell, Candy, Portia, uh, Nene can do the same thing as well. Y'all all have done it. So, you know, call a spade a spade. All of y'all have been put in the spade category when it talks about uh, referring back to someone in a negative way or shading someone in a negative way on your social media platform. So no file there because, like I said, every one of y'all have done it. Then it goes in to say, however, Eva doesn't appear to have much remorse. She actually penned a message about a bully becoming the victim on Instagram Live. Check out the screenshot below. If you go to urbanbellmag.com, you will see uh, the link that goes to Eva Marcel's social media account, and I guess you can pull up and see what she has to say. I can't really put it on my channel because it'd be a copyright strike. We don't need all that, okay? Uh, but the last and final paragraph, it says, Some Real Housewives of Atlanta fans believe Kenya and Marlo are being hypocrites, but Kenya disagrees and explains why on Twitter. If you want to go, go to Kenya Moore's Twitter account and see whatever she has to say, but it is printed out where I can read it. She writes, I sling mud after it slung at me. That's not true, Kenya. Sometimes you draw first. You draw first blood first, or you draw the pistol out to spray people with the bullets first sometimes. just depends on how you're wanting to embellish yourself on that particular episode or, or season. We've seen it. Uh, they can do very many playbacks on you. Sometimes you start shit first, and sometimes you end it. But, you know, hey, it just is what it is. Um, but she goes on to say, that's my point you clearly missed in anyone saying I'm playing victim. I'm simply pointing out when people come for me with below the belt shade first is ignored. But when my response to shade that uh, is lethal, then I, I'm mean, be warned. So I'm like, ah, can you, can you, can you, can you? Who cares at this point? You know, you're going to spray bullets. Marlo going to spray bullets. Eva going to spray bullets. Nene going to spray bullets. Portia going to spray bullets. Candy really don't get too much into spraying bullets, but if she have to, she shall, and she has done it in the past, but not so much as the other women, uh, except when we were um, bombarding her with a lot of questions and concerns about why Phaedra can't come back. And so that was like a little touchy feeling subject for you at the time, and I do understand it fully. And, uh, of course, Cynthia, she gets on there, but we, we ain't going to bring her up because um, mm we ain't finding no validity on her standing on her own as of yet. Yeah, she's on my couch. Nene's on the couch. And we let Eva out just to talk a little something, something. But she pretty much going to be back on the couch as well. <laughs> I love, but thank you guys for joining me. I took a little bit longer because I had my mini sidebars. But hopefully y'all stayed to the video from the beginning to the end. I really appreciate that. It helps me financially as well when you do that. And when you let the um, commercials that I do have that come in my videos, that you sit and watch them fully, okay? Help your sister out, okay? But thank you for coming to uh, my channel, Delp Chanel's 48th World. You know I love it. I love to respond back to you all when y'all get down in them comments. I think I do a good job responding back to you all. I mean, if it's something I agree with totally in its totality, uh, then you just get a little uh, heart from me. But if it's something I'm like, mm, I don't know about that, or if it's some pers- type of perspective I never had got a chance to really look at it from that viewpoint, I appreciate those too. Because sometimes y'all be putting me on another level because I, I be like, sometimes I have tunnel vision, be like, oh, no, nah, this some shit, this same shit, that day in and day out. I ain't worried about that. But then y'all make good 
points of view and then I have to look at that perspective and I'm like yeah it could have rained that way I didn't think about it so I appreciate y'all much love for that uh we can grow together you know what I'm saying perspectives of just that of a person their opinions are just that of that person so don't get too twisted about ooh, you just wear Kenya out Ooh, you just wear Nene out Ooh, you just wear the whole damn group out but, you know, it's just like, this is what I see. This is what I feel. So I speak on it. Now, anybody else that want to start their own um, YouTube channel and get up here and do what I do and think they can do it better, if so, go ahead. And you're going to see the same people that, you know, come after me. They're going to come after you because everybody want to voice their opinion. It just depends on how you want to react to it. So it's just you what it is. That's what I'm saying. Everything is not as you see it, as y'all try to say when I'm doing my videos on certain people that y'all may like that I don't have the same opinion shown. You know, just like you all don't know me. And y'all say I don't know uh, Kenya or the rest of the uh, uh, cast on the Real Housewives of Atlanta or Nene or whatever. You're right, I don't. I only see what they're giving me. And uh, if I turn that back on you all, you only seeing what I give you all. But usually what I give you all on my show is for real, okay? <laughs> Unless I come back and say, uh, y'all, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I misspoke or this, that, and a third. But usually when I come out here and say, I don't thought about what I'm going to say. And it ain't too much going to change my mind. Now, if they, you give me another perspective that I find is, has a lot of validity in it and it's solid, then I come back and say, you know, da, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but I still may have somewhat still my same opinion because I'm just trying to do me. I'm not trying to do anybody else. And maybe y'all should think about that in your lives. Don't always do what other people do out there. Be your own leader. Be your own follower. And don't just follow everybody blindlessly on a person or a certain subject. And investigate. Ask questions if it's piquing your interest. You know what I'm saying? And then form your own opinion. You don't have to follow the sheep on every doggone thing. Speak your own mind. Be your own voice. Okay? But that's my wisdom. My golden nuggets I want to drop to you all. It's a family affair over here. Okay? I get y'all straight. Y'all get me straight. We're just going to be respectful. That's all I'm saying. But okay? I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I got to get to a couple of more. Then I'm going to call it a night. I can go to sleep like a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. But y'all be blessed. And I will see you all next video. Peace. Deuces. And I'll see you later. Bye.